It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. Or we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Day three, leadership's conduct at the top. Obviously, in every compliance program, the ethical tone of a company and accountability all starts at the top, and most specifically at senior management. The 2020 guidance stated, beyond compliance structures, policies, and procedures, it is important for a company to create and foster a culture of ethics and compliance with the law at all levels of the company. The effectiveness of a compliance program requires a high-level commitment by company leadership to implement a culture of compliance from the middle and the top. To assist companies in understanding the requirements of the 2020 update, it sets out the following inquiries. Conduct at the top. Have senior leaders, through their words and actions, encouraged or discouraged compliance, including the types of misconduct involved in the investigation? What concrete actions have they taken to demonstrate leadership in the company's compliance and remediation efforts? Have they modeled proper behavior to subordinates? Have managers tolerated greater compliance risks in pursuit of new business or greater revenues? Have managers encouraged employees to act unethically or achieve a business objective or impeded compliance personnel from effectively implementing their duties? This requirement is more, is more than simply the ubiquitous tone at the top as it focuses on the conduct of senior management. The DOJ wants to see a company's senior leadership actually doing compliance. The DOJ asks that the company leadership has through their words and concrete actions brought the right message of doing business ethically and in compliance to the organization. How does senior management model its behavior on a company's values? And finally, how is such conduct monitored in the organization? This means you must document corporate decisions where a compliance solution was proposed but rejected. In other words, is there a business justification for moving forward with the action? If this action occurs, how has the compliance risk managed going forward? Similarly, compliance techniques should be used to, to document, to demonstrate that the compliance function has met the requirement of the final question. Senior management must share the same values through operationalizing compliance going forward. Lynn Payne and her seminal article, Managing for Organizational Integrity, laid out five factors which can be used as guideposts to not only set the right tone from senior management on doing business ethically and in compliance, it can lay the groundwork for senior management to model appropriate behavior and then have it monitored by the company going forward. Number one, the guiding values of the company must make sense and be clearly communicated by senior management in a variety of settings to the company workforce. Number two, the company's leaders must personally be committed and willing to take action on the, those values. This means management must not simply overlook the transgressions of top producers. Three, a company's systems and structures must support its guiding principles, and these internal systems and structures cannot be overridden by senior management without both justification and board approval. Four, a company's values must be integrated into normal channels of management decision-making and reflected in the company's critical decisions. Sometimes a company must turn down business if there are too many red flags present or engaging in such behavior. The company values and ethics will not be violated. Five, managers must be empowered to make ethical, sound decisions on a day-by-day -day basis. This means senior management must fully support and back up such decisions. I once interviewed a CEO, and he observed the following. You want me to be the ambassador for compliance? I immediately said yes. That is exactly what I needed you to do. The CEO, as an ambassador of compliance, can fully model the conduct that senior management engage in going forward. Another area where a CEO can forcefully engage in an entire company is through a powerful video message about doing business in the right way and in compliance. A great example was Centerpoint Energy's video put out after the 2015 Volkswagen emission testing scandal became public. The video featured the CEO of the company. He used the VW scandal to proactively address culture and values of the company and use the entire scenario as an opportunity to promote integrity in the workplace. But simply more than a one-time video, the company followed up with an initial resource manager's toolkit, What Does Integrity Mean to You?, which means managers were used to facilitate discussions and ongoing communications with employees around the company's ethics and compliance program. 
Finally, the cost of the video was quite reasonable and it was produced internally. So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, senior management must actually do compliance. That is not simply talk the talk, but you have to walk the walk. Are there uh, decisions that were made which upheld the company's values, culture, and ethics? And those are those decisions documented? For even in this area, if something is not documented in the regulator's eyes, it's never happened. So in uh, has a transaction been turned down? Has a contract been rejected? Has a third party been rejected? Has an M&A partner been potentially rejected because of culture or ethics or values concerns? Number two, use your CEO to talk about current events and how those ethical failures are lessons to be learned for your organization. Um, it can be a powerful message when your CEO talks about uh, ethical and culture failures, even in an industry outside your own industry and in your own uh, geographic regions. And finally, how about the CEO as a compliance ambassador? If the CEO is out there talking about compliance and being an ambassador for compliance, this can be a powerful tool for you going forward. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. I hope you will join me for the entire month of January where I take a look at some of the significant changes in compliance and FCPA enforcement which occurred in 2020 and will help inform your compliance program going forward into 2021 and indeed beyond. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much.